So once again, I'd ask you all to show your appreciation. Some takbir for Sheikh Didat. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Well, we have a number of people ready to ask questions. I'll hand the microphone over to the Sheikh. Which side do you want to take first? We'll take, because this brother happened to be the first. I, I admire him. I should congratulate him. You were the first man to get up for asking questions. You have the first chance, my brother. Right. Sir, that question I'm going to ask you from the Quran, and I will read it in Arabic. So, please, for this English spoken, it's very hard to translate it for me. If anybody, he can translate it. All but me, after my reading, go ahead. My brother, I make it easy for you. I make it easy for you. Sure, I, no, I gave you the Quran already. No, no, you own the Quran already. Open that Quran and read it in Arabic and read it, the translation. Look, I gave it to you already. Mm, uh, yeah. Be fair. Look, I give you time. I give you a chance. I, I give you a chance. You get that Quran, find that verse, read it in Arabic and give them the translation. You do that. Okay. That's fair. You can do it. Yes, my brother. Mr. Didat, as you know, I am a Christian and I'm fascinated by the work you are doing. Let me start from the beginning, Mr. Didat. In your Afrikaners Torah, the one written and printed and revised recently by you and your Islamic Propagation Center, in South Africa, there are two key verses, Surah 355 and Surah 5120, which talk about Jesus. For example, in Surah 355, the Afrikan is rendered this way, I am causing you to die. Muslims in South Africa have taken you to task over this translation. For you are saying that Jesus did die. In your lectures and books, in fact, The Choice, which is your own book which I have, I, I read about six years ago, and I believe it was around about chapter 10, where you say that Jesus was not nailed, but tied to the cross. My dear brother, my look, look, no, 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 you said, look, wait a minute, you lied, you lied against me. You, 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 you not finish this question. Look. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, you lied, you lied against me. More than one lie you uttered already. I'm telling you, you lied against me more than once already, and I will not allow you to continue lying. Now imagine, imagine the man is now, he hears me lecturing in English. He listens to me in English. Right. He listens to me in English. And he's talking about an Afrikaans Quran. Africans, I don't know. Then he's talking about my book. But is he getting removed from the auditorium? Huh? Yes, my brother. No, no, no. Where is my brother with the Quran? Okay. Huh? He fled. You mean he fled? Look, nature, Allah made it. Allah set him up to answer the question right and get the Quran. Look, look, it's not planned by me. I don't know who the man was. He put up the hand. I said, yes, you he gave the right answer. I gave him the Quran. Earlier during the lecture. What okay, makes now we get some good context. Friday. Good. I want some Christian gentleman or lady to tell me that. And I will present them 
with this book, this encyclopedia of Islam, the Holy Quran, 2,000 pages, text translation, commentary. I want to present it to somebody who will give me, I want a Christian, an answer from the Christian. What makes Good Friday good? Great, our sins. great. Uh, I wanted this simpler. I said that Christ died for our sins. But you said that. You said that. In so many words, that is the answer. This is yours. Okay. So now, okay, so he did get it. Look at it. Look at the setup. This is how God works. He is the first man to ask question. He wants to read it in Arabic because he's an Arab. Okay. He's entitled to. Now, he wants somebody to translate for him. So why do you do that? I, you got the Quran already. Quran already. I presented you with. Go back, sit down while the other guys are busy. Find that verse. Find that verse. And you come out and you read the Arabic and you read the translation. Can anything be fairer than that? No. But you see, it's a kind of, I don't know what to say. This spirit that they have, that spirit deserts them. So, out they go. I'll see the other guy. He was talking about an Afrikaans Quran. I don't know Afrikaans. He's going to quote from there. I said, look, here is a Quran. Open it. See the same verse. Tell me. He said, in my book, The Choice, he read six years ago. He's a liar because this book has only come out now. Choice. <laughs> no, no. Lies upon lies. So I said, now look, here's my brother. You talk about the choice. Here's the choice. Find that chapter and verse where I said Jesus died, that he was not nailed, but he was tied. Did I say that? I'm saying these are the Christian theories. One Christian sect of denomination says this. The Jehovah's Witness say that. These are your theories. These are your artists who are drawing these drawings about Jesus being nailed, Jesus being tied up with ropes. That's not mine. So I give you the choice. I said the Jehovah's Witness says no, he was put on a stake. You know, he was, and he was standing like this. No, not like that. I said, look, these are the choices I'm giving you in my book. The choices I'm giving you in my book. Now you take the choice. What happened? Because it's your Christians are telling me all these variant things about what happened to Jesus. Now he said, I said. I said, no, I didn't say that. You said, I said, it's a choice. I said, here's the choice. Come on, find it and read it to the people. No, <laughs> the man, amazing. Amazing. Yes, my son. Interesting. Begotten means exactly and precisely what it says. Begotten, fathered, conceived of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was indeed, as man, born of the Spirit, born of the Father. Begotten, not made. And I'm so glad you made that distinction, because it is central to the Christian faith, and it actually establishes his deity, that what is begotten of God is God, and what is created of God is not God. And that is why the deity of Jesus Christ is revealed in his birth. Uh, that just as you so eloquently quoted Billy Graham saying that the Holy Spirit overshadowed the Virgin Mary. And, 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 and uh, you seem to think that someone was upset by the idea that that the Father sired Jesus. Well, I am not upset by that at all. It's absolutely scriptural. And therefore, uh, I want to ask you to confirm, as I think you have so eloquently said on, on, the, uh, on the videotape, uh, that the distinction between the Islamic religion and the Christian faith, the Christian revelation, is that the Jesus of the Quran is a creature created by Almighty God, whereas the Jesus of the Christian revelation is begotten of God, is an, a manifestation of God in the flesh. And we say, therefore, that Jesus, just as Billy Graham uh, pointed out, uh, it was born as a result of the impregnation by the Spirit of the Virgin Mary. And as Irene Milan pointed out in our earlier on, we have therefore Jesus fully man and fully God. Now to an unbeliever like yourself, we do not expect that to make sense unless the Holy Spirit gives the revelation. Because no one will say Jesus is Lord but by the Spirit. You see in this expression we got John 3.16. I take it you have it in your American standard version. That's right. But the RSV, you said you don't use it. 
reason best known to yourself. But Christian scholars, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations. I don't know whether you, since you do not claim to belong to any denomination, they went and produced this book. And the, the testimonies, the praises that which are being heaped upon this translation by Anglican Church newspaper, Church of England newspaper says that this is the finest version which has been produced in the present century. Times Literary Supplement says a completely fresh translation by scholars of the highest eminence. Life and Work says the well-loved characteristics of the authorized version combined with a new accuracy of translation. And the Times says the most accurate and close rendering of the original. They are claiming that this translation goes to the most ancient manuscripts. And in John 3.16, they have eliminated the word begotten because they say these are defects in your present scriptures, more especially based on Jerome's Latin Vulgate, the King James Version. The authors here, 32 scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they say that the King James Version, used by a billion Christians today in different, different languages, King James Version, says, yet the King James Version has grave defects. By the middle of the 19th century, the development of biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient than those upon which the King James Version was based made it manifest that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision. So they revised it. That is what the RSV is, 1952. And the word begotten they threw out as a fabrication, interpolation. It was a fabrication. So if this was inspired by God, if God said, I have begotten a son, it would be something. But since it was an interpolation, it's work of people, you know, with vested interest, like you would, wouldn't use this Bible at all, because it, that it won't suit you. Whatever you are out to preach, it hasn't got it. The Ascension is taken out, the verse on the Trinity is taken out, and there still remain those many defects, serious, grave defects, you see, which need certification. So this word begotten is a defect and they took it out. But Mr. Mr. Dida, yes, if we were going to base our belief on one word, we would be a lost people. There are many other scriptures which I can quote and which I've quoted. No, no, you quote one at a time. It. If you quote one at a time, like this now. That's right. The word begotten we're discussing, I said, look, this word begotten, you have to tell me now that these 32 scholars of the Christian Bible were not scholars. That they were lay people or, or barbers, shoemakers, they, they went and produced this book. These 50 denominations that you don't belong to that, but those 50 denominations are all heathen or they're unbelievers. They went and produced this book and they made, they sold millions of this and they made a net profit of 11 to 15 million on this book alone. May I quote yes. from this book, yes. the doctrine of the begotten Son of God from the scriptures, all right? The now, word begotten. The word begotten. Yes. Mm -hmm. The RSV, I do think it's an inferior translation, but it's one you put your faith in. I quote. I didn't. This is your church that have produced it. <laughs> <laughs> your point is. All right. For to what angel did God ever say, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. Or again, I will be to him a father, he shall be to me a son. And in verse 7, of the angels he says, who makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the Son, he says, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Now, you where was this quotation taken from? Hebrews chapter 1. Right. Quoting the Psalms. Right. So, we go to the book of Psalms. And we find that this was attributed to David. God's Almighty is speaking to David. He said, I will declare a decree unto thee, that thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. God is speaking to David. This day means today, I have brought you into being. 
begotten. When did God Almighty tell Jesus that I have begotten you today? In the canonical gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Is there a single statement, voice heard from heaven, God saying that I have begotten you today? No. But this is what we read in the book of Psalms and God had spoken those words to David. Now if you take them out from there and you apply them as Paul has done to make God out of Jesus, well that is his business. But what I am saying is this, that Jesus Christ, that is not, it's an amazing thing, that you are not quoting me a single word of Jesus. Whatever you are out to prove, there is not one word I am hearing that Jesus said this or Jesus said that. You are quoting me Paul again and again. You quote, he is quoting scripture from the Old Testament. And I said when you look at it on the very face of it, he is not talking about Jesus, he is talking about David. Actually at that point, perhaps we can move on to the next topic and see if we can progress from there. Alright. The next one please, Jonathan. <coughs> His Holiness the Pope is busy. And he is the head of 850 million Roman Catholics. Yeah. His Holiness the Pope. And His Holiness the Pope has just made a proclamation. You get this morning star and you read there, he is making his wish known to the world that he wants to have a dialogue with the Muslims. Dialogue. You know what's a dialogue? A friendly chat, an exchange of views, communication between one group of people and another, in this particular instance, with the Muslims. This is what Allah Bari Ta'ala is telling us in the Holy Quran. In the ayah I read to you, from Surah Ali Imran, Quran, if you want to know where Imran is in the Quran, you don't start paging through, paging through 2,000 pages to find where Imran is. What you do, go to the index and look for the word Imran and the I. And it'll tell you chapter 3. And 3 is easy to find because every page is numbered. Once you have found chapter 3, I'm now telling you ayah number 64. 64 is easy to find because every verse is numbered. Once you have found it, read it. I says, pull, tell them. Ya ahl al-kitab. Say, oh people of the book. Oh people of the book. Who are the people of the book? Our learned men will tell us unanimously that these are the Jews and the Christians. Jews and Christians are the people of the book. Jews and Christians. Allah Bari Ta'ala is telling us to call them, Ya Ahl Al-Kitab, Ta'ala. Ta'ala. Come, come. Ila kalimatin sawaim bainana wa bainakum. That we come to common terms as between us and you. Let us get onto a common platform. Let us get together for the sake of mankind, for the sake of peace, for the sake of God. Let us get together on a common platform. And the basis of getting together, Allah gives us the conditions. I want somebody to tell me they are unreasonable. I want to find people to tell me that these are unre unreasonable conditions. Number one, Allah says, Allah that we worship none but Allah okay. shay'an and that we associate no partners with him and that we do not take from among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah but if they turn back tell them that we are Muslims meaning that we have submitted our wills to the will of Allah Whatever Allah wants us to do, we are prepared to do. But let us get together in the fellowship of faith, in the worship of the one true God. One, there is only one God, and let us worship Him, whom we Muslims call Allah. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not our Allah. Inform the people, let them know. But there are millions of people who don't know these things. They think that we Muslims are the Antichrists, the Dajjal. The enemies of Jesus. They do not know that in this holy Quran are enshrined the virtues of Maryam alayhi salam, the mother of Jesus. And this mighty messenger of God, Jesus, his birth is described in two places in the holy Quran. They don't know that we Muslims, we believe that Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God. 
that we believe in his miraculous birth, that we believe that he was a Messiah, the Messiah, translated Christ, and we believe in his many miracles, including those of giving life to the dead by God's permission and of healing those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. In my country, when I tell this to the, my fellow countrymen, the Christians, they are thinking that I'm trying to curry favor with them, trying to be nice to them, that if I scratch their back, they might scratch my back. Hmm. If I can say a few good words about the Jesus, they in turn might say a few good words about our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, that's far from the truth. The Holy Quran in this has enshrined what I'm telling you about. There is a chapter in the Quran called Surah Maryam, in honor of the name of the mother of Jesus Christ, Surah Maryam. It happens that in the Christian Bible, there is no such book. This Christian Bible I have in my hand, the Old and the New Testament put together. This particular one of the Roman Catholics, I'm sorry, this one of the Protestant world has 66 books inside. 66. Mm -hmm. 66 the Roman books. Catholic version has 73 72. books inside. 73 booklets put together, creates the encyclopedia called the Bible. In those 73 books of the Roman Catholics and 66 of the Protestants, there is not a single book entitled Mary. You open the Quran and you find chapter Mary, Surah Maryam. Now you have to inform this to people. His Holiness the Pope, he wants to have a dialogue. Wherever he goes, he wants to have a dialogue with the Muslims. But suppose His Holiness was here today with us. I would have, in all humility, approached him. Your Holiness, the Quran tells us to have a dialogue with you. Ta'ala, ta'ala. Allah tells us to call them ta'ala, ta'ala. And in the book of Isaiah, also the Holy Bible tells you, come, let us reason together. Come, let us reason together. So, we are going to have a little dialogue. Though I had tried to have a dialogue with him, I had written to him, but unfortunately, it didn't come about. But hypothetically, mm. this evening, let us say that His Holiness is here with us today, and we want to have a dialogue with Him, and we start. I start by asking His Holiness, Your Holiness, what does the Bible, your Bible, your Holy Bible, says about Muhammad? What do you expect to hear from Him? or any learned man of Christianity, the priests, parsons, predicants, ministers, bishops, archbishops, about without Muhammad. hesitation, they will tell us nothing. Mm -hmm. If you ask any Christian, what does the Bible, your Bible say about Muhammad, they will tell you nothing. You may ask, why nothing? Does not the Holy Bible speak about the, the rise of Israel? the rise of communism, and even the beast. In the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it speaks about a beast, and it even speaks about Gog and Magog. Yajuj, Majuj. All these things are mentioned in the, in the Bible. They will say yes, they are. Then surely it must have something to say about this mighty messenger of God, Muhammad, sallam, who made it possible for one billion Muslims today, one billion, one thousand million Muslims in the world to believe in Jesus. Because no Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus. This man, Muhammad sallam, who made that possible, surely there must be something about him in the Bible. The man will tell you, he says, son, my son, if there was anything, I would have known it. I would have seen it. I would have recognized it. But this word Muhammad is not to be found anywhere in the Bible. You may, if you have my book, it is being given out, what the Bible says about Muhammad, there is a reference there that in the Hebrew Bible, in the original Hebrew language, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 5, it says, Hikko the word there is Muhammadim, which is Muhammad with respect and honor. In the Hebrew language, there are two types of plurals, plural of respect 
and plural of numbers. This is a plural of respect. As we read the Quran, as Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Who is this us? Father, Son and Holy Ghost? No, we don't believe in that. Who? Allah, Jibreel and Muhammad? Astaghfirullah. No. Who is this we? Who is this us? We know that in the Arabic language, this is a plural of respect. Allah is talking about himself like the royal we, the royal plural. So Muhammadin, Muhammad is mentioned by name. But the Christian world in the translations, they have translated the word Muhammadin into the word altogether lovely. So when you read the English Bible, it says altogether <laughs> lovely. You can't imagine that they're talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa like for example, if it was the praised one, Muhammad means the praised one. If it was written the praised one, you won't think, you can't imagine this talking about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So, we said now let us reason, let us reason. There are chapters and verses in the Holy Bible where our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa is referred to. Is the Bible really the word of God? Truly the word of God? Now in any dispute, any confrontation, any case, legal, criminal, theological, the first thing they do is to identify the witnesses or the exhibits. So in this case, since we are talking about the Bible, I have brought with me here some Bibles. We would like to know which Bible are we talking about? Hmm. Generally people say there's only one Bible. Generally people think there's only one Bible. But here I show you this little book here. This is the Holy Bible. It is called the Reams or the Douay version of the Roman Catholics. Brother Stanley, do you accept this as the word of God? It says the Holy Bible. Do you accept it? That's number one. Number two, I have here with me the Schofield Reference Bible. Reverend Schofield, backed by eight DDs, Doctors of Divinities, they produced this Bible. This is based on the King James Version. Okay. Are we talking about this Bible, Roman Catholic Bible, or this Protestant Bible? <laughs> this one here, I went before coming over, I bought a Swedish Bible. This is also Swedish based on Bible. the King James Version. Is this Bible we are talking about? Then I have here, Siamese twins, as you see, identical, identical Bibles. Look at them. You can't mistake their identity. They are identical. Both say Revised Standard Version, Revised Standard Version. Okay. Out of these two, one is 1952 and one is 1971. Which one would you accept as the Word of God? So we have to identify, if you can help me, he said, look, I accept the RSV, or I accept only the Swedish Bible, I only accept the King James Version, or I accept the Roman Catholic Bible, then we can proceed. Otherwise, we don't know which Bible are we talking about. Because these are all different Bibles. By God, they are not the same. Even these twins are not the same. Mm. They may look like Siamese twins, but they are not. So if I have the privilege of knowing, it will make it easy, my task easier to proceed with the Bible which the pastor accepts as the word of God, out of all these. Which one? Sir? Yes. Which one, sir? Out of these. I'll answer you when I get the time for myself because I have a very good answer. Thank you. Okay, sir. <laughs> okay. During his time, Pastor Stanley did not provide an answer, but close. I have discovered 
that uh, the Quran has different kind of translations following exactly the same principle as when the Bible has been translated. I can prove that reading from this one that was translated by Abdullah Yusuf Ali and reading from this one that we bought in Lahore, Pakistan translated by Mulana Muhammad Ali. Okay, how many highlights in his rebuttal? The question remains unanswered. You know, I must take off my hat to Pastor Stanley. I must take off my hat. You know, beautifully, he has beautifully evaded answering the questions. Beautiful. And he has had us all tentalized with this oratory. And I tell you, give him another clap for that. Give him a clap. For that. It is, it is really difficult, you see, when an orator is pouring out his thoughts, is full of knowledge, this thing, that thing, and he's catching us, he's holding us there, so we fail to realize that the man is not answering the problems. The first question, if you remember, now I want you to remind you. And if you have a chance, buy this videotape, buy the tape, and at home, when you will be able to listen to both the speakers again and again, you'll be able to see, you know, what the game is being played. You'll be able to catch the joke then, better than while you're listening now. You're too much involved in this discussion at the moment. Mm. The very first question I asked was to identify the witness, if you remember. In any case, any court case, if you fail to do that, the judge would stop you in your stride. He says, stop it. Identify your witnesses. And that's the first question I asked. Here are the witnesses. The exhibits. The Roman Catholic Bible. Do you accept this as the word of God? These twins I showed you. Do you accept them as the word of God? This Schofield's Bible. Do you accept them? Do you accept this as the word of God? But he says, no, I will answer in my time. His time, he had full time, 60 and more minutes, that you know. And the question is still not answered. I will, I will answer. Yes, he will answer. Now, let me tell you the reason why he couldn't answer. He knew, he knows. Any learned man knows that this is not simply a question of translations. You see, when he spoke about the Qur'an, there are different translations of the Qur'an by different mm -hmm. people. Different yeah. people have a different choice of words. Yeah. For the same thing, you use different terminology to express the same thing. This is, every translator has a right. Yeah. But a version is quite a different thing from a translation. I explained to you, simple, you see, this Roman Catholic Bible has got 73 books inside. True or false, Professor? True. 73. The book that you are using, the author version is the basis of that book that you have there, has got 66 books. Difference of seven. This book, the Roman Catholic Bible, preceded yours, the Protestant Bible. It had seven extra books. You threw it out. The Protestant world threw it out. The book of Maccabees, the book of Judith, the, the book of Tobias. Seven books you threw out from what your canon as the word of God. In other words, you do not accept the Roman Catholic Bible per se as the word of God. Because there are seven more books in here than what you have in your Bible. Hmm. This is what you ought to have explained to the people. Why don't you accept this book as God's word? I will tell you. <laughs> <laughs>